Good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersUppingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Sunday, June 27th, 2021. Uh, beginning here on the four hour chart, I just kind of want to go over a quick review of where we're at and what we're reaching, what point we're reaching. Um, we are continuing to count a minor wave five. Uh, and within that minor wave five, we have completed uh, what I have best counted as four waves of minute degree. So we're in that minute wave five, which is subdivided, but we're in minute wave five to complete minor wave five, intermediate wave five, and a primary bold wave. So again, we still remain on track <clears throat> to putting in the uh, ultimate highs, which will complete a primary third wave and drop us into a primary fourth wave degree primary degree fourth wave, excuse me. And that is looking to be one of a, of a fairly larger uh, degree in terms of how far it's going to drop and how long it will take. And so this one is going to be, if we consider that the primary third wave has basically been in force since uh, 2008, 2009, and that would put it into a very long-term advance. And so I would not suspect that our corrections are going to be a matter of a week or a couple of days as we've previously seen in fourth waves. This one took, it was from Tuesday in Globex to Sunday in Globex. So that was a fourth, it was a fourth wave, but in terms it was in a minute degree. So it doesn't, it doesn't actually take that long. This is primary degree. So it's going to take, I think, at least a year to actually unwind and for the market to do all the consolidation it needs, et cetera, et cetera. So we're reaching fairly a uh, little bit long-term high, at least for the near future. But again, it's a primary fourth wave, which leaves an additional primary fifth wave up out there in the future to still happen. So it's not the pan ultimate, it's not the end end, uh, that's still out there and that's still going to be coming. So plenty of good trading left in for all types of traders. Right now, though, <clears throat> excuse me, we opened in, in Globex today. We ran up to a quick new high at 42.78. I think 25 action, maybe, maybe even 29, uh, 79, but right in that area. And that's where I am labeling wave three. Uh, the market kind of ticked above that uh, 70.5 or 70.5% level at uh, 42.69, 42.70. In fact, the first time they did it right on the nose, came back down, but then ran right back up. And that's okay. So if indeed this did complete this minute third wave, then we're gonna be looking for a minute, <coughs> excuse me, a minute uh, fourth wave to a sibling fourth wave, excuse me. And so that's gonna be retracements. I'm gonna be looking for, um, I'm just gonna put it on top of our upside because our upside I wanna keep in place. 78, okay. there you go. So a 38% a, a retracement, which is totally within the realm of reality, brings us back down to uh, 4250, 4250, 51. But in advance of that, we do have the 200 day moving average. We have the 20 day moving average down here at 68. We should find some support again at that 70.5% level. That was resistance all the way up. It should provide some support on the way back down. I'm not looking for a lot, but I would be looking for it to come into the area of a corrective or fourth wave correction of a lesser degree. And that's going to be right here. So coming down to this level for 4250, 4252, it's very, very clean. And as would 4258 for all that, just because that's right, it is within the zone. So, you know, I think we got about a 20 point maybe drop. And whether it happens all on one day or whether it takes several days, who knows, we're gonna let the market tell us that. But I do think we're gonna get some continued downside. If it comes in extremely shallow, and the rally picks up again and we start moving to new highs above that, could be one of two things. If we don't start to accelerate higher and we kind of hang around up here and make additional new small highs, 
then it's just going to be the, the, the third wave wasn't complete where I thought, and we would move that over. But if it starts to break, we have stronger resistance at 4286.31. Then again, our next level would be 4300, basically. And we have an ultimate kind of area up here at 4230 that uh, we're, I'm feeling that that should contain uh, the fifth wave. I complete the entire sequence. Now it could break there, and that's just going to not change that. You know, we're reaching our ultimate top here from uh, primary wave three. It's going to make me go back and redo some of my Fibonacci and the count, um, because the adjustments that I make to the count do not. The only thing that really are affecting is where it's going to end. So if I need to include more space to the upside, it does not necessarily change the the uh, Elliott wave count itself. It just maybe in some of the internals. So I think we're still finishing a primary wave three. We're still finishing an intermediate wave five, and we're still finishing a minor wave five. What may be adjusted is the minute inside that minor five. That's what may get adjusted to provide additional upside and also just to kind of clean up where the Fibonacci is coming. I did it in the NASDAQ today. So if you're listening to both, the same thing may happen here in the S&P, but right now we're getting, we are not getting an indication that that should be the case. So for tomorrow, I uh, would look for continued downside. We have our downside limitations. It should not fall all that much. In fact, I would continue to think it's going to come in maybe down here at the 0.236 of wave three. And that would be pretty shallow for the type of wave that we're looking for. But that's down at uh, 61, 42.61. And so that would be like a minimum. But our first one comes in at 69 and 61, and then 52 to 50. But that's really not all that huge. But these are areas I'm looking for before we get that uh, final push up. Now, that fifth wave, even though it's minute and a sub minute, these can subdivide. They can continue to subdivide as waves build up to the, uh, where they need to be and where they're going to go. So we'll let the market tell us. I continue to encourage people to trade accordingly intraday, uh, even intra minutes. Uh, intra hour, you're going to trade using your um, moving averages. Moving averages are very, very, very clean and good indicators of uh, direction and the strength of the direction of the way. Uh, so, right now, we remain in the position where the, the uh, larger moving averages, the 200 day, the 50 day, the 20 day, are continuing to angle higher. And that keeps the pressure on the bulls rather than the bears. If it starts to break down below the 20, then I would start to lean more that the, that the bears have at least control of that hour or that 15 minutes or five minutes, whatever time frame you're looking at. Um, and then I still would then be looking for lower uh, moving averages and also that the Fibonacci support to come into play. So if I'm looking for this, it, it's, it will continue to point the shorter time frames that would be the, the four day and the eight day into a more negative position. You can start to see on these very small 30 minute, and if I go down again to the 15 minute, you're gonna see how the moving averages are beginning to ever slightly curl. When they start to curl, see here we get a little bit more of what actually is now taking place. Let's so follow it down to the five minute, open it up, take a look, maybe. There you go. Um, so you can see, we kind of got an A, B, and then we have a one, two, three, four, and this is a five. So it could be winding itself up right now. But again, this is a five minute chart, so we gotta allow for quite a bit in terms of what is actually forming. But right now, uh, as if it's gonna be really shallow, I can do A, B, and then a one, a two, a three, a four, and this is ending up being a five. So then it's an A, B, C. Maybe it gets down to here, maybe it doesn't. If it does, and then we continue to rally, then it brings into question as to whether this final little push higher to complete the third wave is, is done. That's all. Uh, so we continue to keep a very bullish tone to the market. And the stronger moves right now, I continue to believe will be to the upside. But tomorrow is another day, and we're going to wait. And that's where I'm going to leave all of this. And the next update will be Monday the 20th.